Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the Comment Bank feature in Google Classroom. This is basically a place where we can store all of our frequently used comments so that we don't have to type the same thing over and over again when giving student feedback. We'll also talk about how to get a little fancy with our comments, so I'll show you how I added these emojis and bolded the text and how we can add links to outside resources for students to access as well. So to get started, you'll just need a posted assignment in Google Classroom because that's where we're going to access our comment bank and where we can add the comments. So I'm in my pretend class, in my pretend assignment, and if you just click on any student's work, you're going to see that it launches in this frame here. So this is like their grading tool. Now, if you look over here, you can see there's a spot to assign a grade. There's a space for private comments, so we'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, and these are all the files that are attached. So if I click over here to comment bank, you're going to see that these are all of the comments I have previously added. Now you can add a comment to the bank and it will appear regardless of what class or assignment you're in. So all of these comments that I have here are going to show up in any classroom or any assignment that I'm grading in. So that's pretty cool. So I'm just going to add a comment right here to my bank. Click on add to bank and let's see, please view formatting for in text citations. So let's just say this is a comment that I want to reuse. I'm going to just click add. So now that I've added it to my bank, again, you can see all of the comments that I've previously added. There are two ways to use these comments. The first way is to do it in an actual comment in the student's doc so that it appears like a comment that you see here. And to do that, all you have to do is click on whatever you want to comment on. You'll see that this add a comment icon appears. You can also get to it from up here and you're just going to click on that. So to pull up the comments from the comment bank, you're just going to type this little hashtag slash pound sign, number sign, whatever we want to call it these days, and it will pull up all of the comments. So you can see again, once I type that, all of my comments from my comment bank appear, and then I can just select the one that I want, and it's really easy to do that. So I'm just going to click comment. So that's the first way. Again, you just click on what you want to comment on, type the little hashtag, and then select the comment from your bank. The other way to leave a comment from your comment bank is to do so in the private comments. So this is like right down here and students will see this when they just come into the assignment without actually clicking on their doc. And you can do that again by going to your comment bank. You're going to click on the comment options, these three little dots right here, and copy to clipboard. So this is basically going to copy the text so that when you come back to the private comment, you can just paste control V from there, and then you can post. So again, two different ways to get to your comments. The first one, little hashtag, pull up your comments from here, or you can copy to clipboard and paste. So either method you can see is a lot quicker than having to retype the same things over and over again. And so that is basically the function of Google Classroom's comment bank. But before we go, I just wanted to quickly show you a couple of these fancy tools here. So how we can add things like bolded text and links to outside resources. So this is a link to a video that I created in Screencastify. And basically what, or why I included this is because I can, I can tell students to review MLA formatting all day long, but if I provide an actual link for students to click on, it's a lot more likely that they're going to do that. So this again was created in Screencastify. That is a Google Chrome extension that you'll see appears at the top of your browser. And you can just Google Screencastify Chrome extension and you'll find it. And basically you click on it and once you sign in with Google, you can record your screen and then your videos will automatically save to your Google Drive. So it makes it really easy to grab the link and share with students. So this right here is a video that I created to show students how to format their essay in MLA format so they can you know, watch the video and um, kind of follow along if they need to. So that is one reason why I really like adding links to resources. So in order to do this, just very quickly I'll show you, I'm just going to come over to this other resource. So let's say there's a PDF or a, an image or whatever that I want to share with students. So I'm going to grab the shareable link and I'm going to do that by clicking share. 
And you'll see here are the privacy settings. So mine is set to anyone with the link can view. And I'm actually doing this from a personal account. So if you're on a school account, you will probably have an additional layer of privacy settings. So you just want to kind of click on it and make sure that you don't want them to edit. You want, just want to make sure that they have viewing access only and that they can um, you know, access it from their school accounts as well. So I'm going to click on copy link and then click done. So now I've got the link and I can come back to my comment bank. Please review formatting for in-text citations. So this link that I've copied is a resource for students to, to do that. So I'm just going to copy the link and it doesn't show up as a live link in the comment bank, but you can see that once I actually leave it as a comment, it will show up as a live link. So another thing that I can do is add bolded text and emojis to my comments, and this will just help them stand out a little bit more. And honestly, I just love any excuse to put an emoji in anything. And to do that, it's super easy. I'll start with the bolded text. So you can see that here, make sure to read your writing out loud slowly. I put read your writing out loud slowly in bold. So if you look over here, you can see that all I have to do to bold the text is to put these little um, asterisks around it. So read your writing out loud slowly, that's going to bold the text, that's all you have to do. So that's that, and you can see that again, the stuff that I have in these little stars here show up in bold text. And to add the emojis, you'll just need the Emoji One Chrome extension, that's this little guy right up here. So I have um, Emoji Keyboard by Emoji One. Again, you could just Google Emoji Chrome extension, and there's a few different options, but this is the one that I like. So you basically just click on it from your web browser and you can browse all of the emojis. I, I like to use this thumbs up one. Um, you know, there's different uh, emojis that you can use. So let's say I wanna use the thumbs up. It's going to copy it down here. It's automatically copied as soon as I click on it. And then I can, let's see. And then I can use it just by copy and pasting. So that is just another way to get a little fancy with your comments, to make them stand out a little bit more and to help students um, utilize them a little bit more easily. So I guess that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. This is one of my favorite tools. I'm so glad that Google Classroom has finally added this as a feature. It just makes uh, my life a lot easier. And again, you can just store all of your frequently used comments without having to rewrite them or copy and paste them from a different screen. Everything is right here in one window and life is good. So hope you enjoyed the video. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. And again, feel free to reach out if you have any questions about this at all. Thanks for watching. Bye.